Welcome to the latest webinar in our LFX series. Uh, today, we'll learn how EasyCLA can help you streamline the process of enforcing contribution policies and why this is crucial to maintaining your project's health. We're going to walk through the various user workflows supported by the tool, uh, from setting up a contributor license agreement for your project to signing a CLA as an individual or on behalf of your company to managing and approving corporate contribution lists, uh, corporate contributor lists, excuse me. We'll also introduce you to some of the features from our latest release, which will make the process even easier. Uh, so for those of you who have used a prior version of Easy CLA, the, um, we're gonna walk through kind of what those new features are and what that means for, for you uh, using version two. Now, before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Uh, first, this webinar is being recorded, and we're going to be making this available on our YouTube channel. So feel free to revisit this material or share with your team later on. Secondly, we really want to make sure that this is as helpful and relevant of a session as possible. So feel free to ask your questions either in the chat or in the Q&A feature here on Zoom. And we'll also be you know, taking plenty of pauses uh, to take questions live throughout the webinar. At the end, we'll also open up to live questions uh, as well. So we really wanna make sure that this is as engaging and helpful as possible. So let's go ahead and, and begin. First, I wanna introduce you to our main speakers. Uh, Pranab Bajpai is a senior product manager for LFX and he owns product development for EasyCLA. Steve Winslow is our VP of Compliance and Legal here at the Linux Foundation, and he's played an integral part in the creation and continued improvement of this tool. They're going to be joined by David Deal, a senior engineering manager who works on and kind of owns a lot of the development for EasyCLA, as well as myself, um, and we'll help address and field questions as we go along. So now I'm going to go ahead and hand things over to Steve, who's going to give us some context around contributor license agreements to kick things off. Thank you, Stephanie. And hi, everybody. Welcome to the webinar and thank you for joining today. So um, as Stephanie said, I'm just going to give some, some of the framing for what CLAs are and just at a high level what the process looks like with easy CLAs to help orient you when we get into more of the demo. So. Um, for CLAs generally, the first point that I would make is just to be aware that not all open source projects use CLAs. So CLAs being contributor license agreements, some projects use them as their con contribution mechanism. Many other projects don't use them at all. Uh, so for instance, the Linux kernel and many of the other projects that we support, instead of using CLAs, they use the developer certificate of origin or DCO sign off process. So Anything like that, we're kind of setting to the side for this call. This call is really focused not on should you use a CLA or not, but, but specifically for those projects that have decided to use a CLA, what then is the process for getting them signed in an appropriate way to help them accomplish the purposes that they're put in place for. So, and kind of alluding to that, um, for projects that do decide to use CLAs, they may be pretty easy to do in a manual process if you have a small project. But for projects that just start to scale, uh, the process of getting CLAs signed and tracking who can contribute under those CLAs is something that can be extremely time consuming for project maintainers um, to manage all of that manually. It can also be challenging for new incoming contributors to the project uh, to be able to go through the process of getting them signed. So the goal of ECCLA is really to help address some of those pain points. So to help ensure that the right processes are in place for getting CLAs signed by the right people and to help streamline the workflow of managing who is authorized to, to contribute code after a CLA has been signed. So Stephanie, if you can go to the next slide. So, all of this is very this is very easy for an individual CLA, for somebody who's an individual just contributing code on their own behalf, not on behalf of their employer. For that, for an individual CLA, it's very simple. You just have the individual sign it. Um, and you know, so that problem is pretty easy to solve. And I think what we found with before we started building Easy CLA, what we found looking at some of the other tools out there 
is that they take that model and they apply that not just to individual CLAs, but also to corporate CLAs. That they would just ask the person who's contributing code to just sign, sign the same CLA. And I think the, the problem that we saw was as we started looking into that was that there's a lot of nuances in the ways that corporate CLAs work that aren't ha necessarily handled by that sort of approach. So um, for a, a corporate CLA, so a CLA for a company that is con a contributing code, um, there's a number of things you wanna have. You wanna make sure that it's the person who's signing it is somebody who's actually an appropriate signatory for that company. So a lot of companies, particularly as they get larger, will have um, only certain people who are authorized to sign agreements that can make commitments on behalf of the company. So we wanna have a workflow that enables the right person to be able to sign it, who may not be the person who's sitting there at the keyboard contributing the code. We also wanna enable out of band reviews. So for instance, off, you know, many companies will wanna have their legal department take a look at the CLA before it's signed, which might not be easy to do if it's just presented to the, the developer or the contributor to sign directly. We wanna also enable different models of managing authorized contributor lists. So after a CLA has been signed, typically the way the CLAs are set up is that there will be some subset of contributors from that company who are authorized to contribute code. And different companies have different ways of wanting to manage this. Some companies will say, we've signed the CLA, we're fine with all of our employees contributing. Other companies, because of their own, either because of the context in which they operate or for other, for other reasons, they may decide we only wanna allow these two particular employees to contribute code. And the tool that manages the CLA for a project should be able to support all of those different models. Another thing is that contributors from a company, may they might know that their company has signed a CLA, but they might not know how do I get on that authorized contributor list? Who do I talk to? Who's managing this from our company? Um, and then finally, the companies themselves and other, and I'm saying companies here, but this also in, in includes other organizations um, beyond just commercial companies. They want visibility into what's been signed, who's currently authorized from their organization. They wanna have read-only access to this sort of information as well um, across their company and across their projects. So uh, you can go on to the next slide. So a few, a few definitions just quickly, cause you'll see these terms coming up as we go through the demo and through some of the other details. Um, so an IC, oh, great, thank you. <laughs> an ICLA is an individual CLA. So again, that's a, a CLA that somebody is signing just on their own behalf, code they've written maybe in their spare time, but not for their, not for their employer. So code that they own themselves, they'll sign an ICLA to contribute it. A CCLA is a corporate CLA. That's code, that's for when a company is contributing code that the company owns. And then within this, within a company, we have a few different uh, a few different roles that are filled by people. The contributor is the person who's actually submitting the pull request or who's actually submitting a patch or code to the project. We call, there we call them the contributor with an easy CLA. The CLA manager is the person from a company who manages a list of authorized contributors for a particular project. So after a CLA has been signed, it'll designate who the CLA manager is and from that company to that project. And that CLA manager is the person who uses Easy CLA to manage the list of authorized contributors. And then finally, the CLA signatory, like it sounds, is the person who actually signs the CLA. So this might be, this um, is the person who's authorized to sign on behalf of that company. So those three roles, the contributor, the CLA manager, the CLA signatory, those might all be the same person, or those might be three different people entirely depending on the company. And that'll vary company to company, depending on its size, depending how it's set up and other things. So Easy CLA tries to establish, tries to work for all those different use cases. So you can go on, Stephanie. So again, so then high level for Easy CLA, what the process looks like is this. Again, for an individual contributor, it's very straightforward. You just sign the ICLA. So it's just an easy click through you fill in the fields for the ICLA and you sign it on behalf of yourself. For a corporate contributor, the process looks like this. The contributing company's CLA signatory is the one who actually signs the CCLA. In that signed CCLA, it'll designate an initial CLA manager. And after that CCLA is signed, the CLA manager manages the list, uh, uses Easy CLA, uses the tool 
to manage the list of authorized contributors from that company. And they can also add additional CLA managers so that multiple people from their company can manage that approval list. So let me pause there. Um, that's the really the high level framework for what EasyCLA is trying to solve and kind of at a high level how it works. Um, before we go on to talking more about LFX, are there any, any questions um, that anybody wants to raise? So I'm not seeing any, I, I haven't seen anything in the chat or the Q&A. So I think if you have questions, feel free to drop them in. We'll, I'll, I'll respond in line if we feel like we can, or we can save them for discussion at the end of the, further on in the webinar. So Stephanie, I'll go ahead and turn it back to you. Awesome, thanks, Steve. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I have a quick poll for everyone that I'm gonna go ahead and share out. Uh, basically, we just wanna understand, you know, based on what Steve's covered in, the, the various roles involved in the ECCLA and the CLA process in general. I just had a quick question to understand our audience better in terms of you know, which role best describes you in that process. So I'm gonna leave that up for a little bit as I jump into the next section here. Uh, now that we have a bit of context around CLAs, uh, I wanna share a little bit more about you know, what ECCLA is and the, the larger LFX toolkit that it's part of. So LFX was really built to, uh, by the Linux Foundation, to operationalize uh, our proven methodology that helps you know, projects transform into category leaders. Um, ultimately, you know, we recognize that while the world now runs on open source, projects need more than version or source control systems to scale, right? I'm sure all of you understand that uh, you know, this, this takes more than you know, just these, these systems. They, they must have fingers on the pulse of their entire ecosystems, must have tools catered to, to help drive this development. Um, and EasyCLA is, is one of these. Um, so you can see here that EasyCLA is, is part of this larger toolkit, um, which is really built to add value at every aspect of open source development. So whether you're a project manager or uh, a company that's invested in, uh, you know, in open source, or an individual contributor. Uh, we, we really have uh, worked to build out uh, a number of tools that can support your, your needs here. Diving into EasyCLA specifically, um, you know, as, as Steve kind of really walked us through uh, what this tool does, um, one thing I do want to point out here is that you know, EasyCLA is really that only tool that supports both individual and corporate CLA workflows. So really working to streamline this process for everyone involved in contributor license agreements. Breaking that down, um, you know, what that means for, for project managers is it really helps put uh, your CLAs on autopilot, really helping streamline the process, helping you set up and, and configure CLAs for your various repositories to, to make sure that you know, everything is, is enforced. For contributors, um, you know, really it's, you can get kind of get going, uh, start contributing code faster, making this easy to understand you know, when you need to sign a CLA, making that process very straightforward, as well as you know, kind of having you covered for future contributions to those projects. Uh, as a corporate CLA manager, you're able you know, not only to you know, easily manage your company's authorized contributors, but you have you know, flexible configuration. So you're able to really align this with your company's policies and you are able to you know, understand and see you know, which CLAs uh, your, your company has, has signed and who within your company is authorized. And likewise with signatories, you know, whether the, the CLA manager and the signatory is one and the same, or you have a, a separate individual signing the CLAs, you know, just making this a, a straightforward workflow uh, for you as well. And based on the poll, I'm seeing a, a pretty even mix of, uh, you know, kind of roles that we have here, which is, which is great. Again, we're going to be walking through the workflows to kind of cover, cover all of this. Real quick about the features, you know, I mentioned that EasyCLA uh, is really the only tool that supports both the individual as well as corporate CLA workflows. 
um, we've you know, really focused on making sure that these processes are, are streamlined across the board, uh, providing you know, improved CLA visibility. So from the organization side, you're able to see you know, who is covered under your CLAs. And from the project side, you're, you're able to kind of control and, and see you know, which, um, where your CLAs are, are enforced. Uh, I mentioned, especially for, for contributors of one-time CLA approval, so once you have you know, gotten approval for a CLA, uh, for a specific project, uh, you're essentially covered for, for future contributions. So it really is able to, to really streamline the, you know, get, getting you kind of up there and up in and encoding uh, faster. Um, multiple ways to authorize. So you know, whether you are an individual signing on you know, for your own uh, CLA or on behalf uh, of a company. And uh, I see that there are some great responses here on my question around GitHub or Garrett. Um, EasyTLA works with, uh, works with both. We also have you know, flexible repository management. And I'm gonna add here in, you know, I've mentioned throughout that we have a version two kind of release that uh, we are in the midst of, which adds additional uh, capabilities such as role-based workflow support, making it more clear and more helpful for each of the individual, you know, for, for the roles, whether you're an individual contributor, CLA manager, or a project, uh, project manager. Um, ability to auto discover for new repositories. So essentially that means when new repositories are added to your project, you're able to, um, you know, have those kind of auto discovered by the system and be able to determine whether the CLA should or should not be enforced for those. And branch protection, which allows project manager, you know, by one click to enable easy CLA for all of your repository branches. So before I go on, uh, I'm actually going to take a quick pause here and see if there's any questions about, you know, what CLA, easy CLA does or, um, or any of the features that I've covered. Uh, I'm going to go on next to talking about uh, the, the release version two, which is going to be especially relevant to our audience who's used a prior version of Easy CLA. Okay. Stephanie, I see a question in the, in the Q&A, and I'll go ahead and answer it, um, from Oleg asking about whether it's possible to use Easy CLA for other kinds of contributor agreements. Um, and, and yes, like that is something that we've done for some projects where we've had something that is not strictly speaking a CLA, but it's still something that is an agreement that we want to have as basically a gating item before contributors get access to contribute code to a repo. Um, the specifics of it can get kind of into, into some details. So I'll, I'll reach out to you separately on that. I think I, have an, I think I owe you an email on another related topic. So um, there's some potential to be able to do that. And we can look into the specifics. Awesome. Thank you, Steve. Okay, I'm going to go ahead now and jump into what's new. Uh, so I mentioned some specific features. Ultimately, our version two of Easy CLA is all about improved user experience and usability. So we've really streamlined the workflows, uh, provided some contextual help and tool tips to make it clearer based on you know, where you are in the flow and, and what role you have. Uh, kind of what you're uh, what you're needing to do and and help guide you further in that in that process. Um, we've also introduced audit logs, so now you know there's clear records of key events or changes to the CLA groups or your authorization lists. Uh, so whether you're a project uh, manager or a CLA manager, you're able to to access uh, access uh, excuse me access audit logs. Uh, for the corporate CLA workflow, uh, we've uh, improved our searching and filtering, so you're able to more easily search and filter through your authorized users. You can also export a CSV of that authorized user list and even download signed CLA PDFs. Project managers, uh, you, as I mentioned, the auto-enable repositories, so now you can enable new repositories, uh, especially under a GitHub organization and auto setup of that branch protection for, for default repository branches that I mentioned. So what this means, uh, especially if you are using a current version of Easy CLA, ultimately, whether you're a contributor or CLA manager, your workflow is going to be the same uh, as it was in, in a previous version in, in this new release. Um, for new contributors, 
So those who are gated by easy CLA who have not yet contributed to a project that is in that has a CLA enforced, uh, you're gonna follow the same process as before. So if you're contributing on your own, you're gonna be prompted to sign an individual CLA. If you're contributing on behalf of your company, you're going to be prompted to get a, a corporate CLA signed or contact your CLA manager to be added to that list. CLA managers, you'll see improved functionality, uh, making this, you know, managing the CLAs easier. So as I mentioned before, streamlined workflows for adding authorized contributors, being able to search, filter, or download authorized contributor lists, and of course, being able to download those signed CLAs as PDFs. Before we jump into a demo, I'm just going to see pause and see if there were any other questions that uh, came up, especially around what this, uh, you know, what what this new version looks like and what that means to any of our existing Easy CLA users. Okay, not seeing anything come through. Uh, we're going to jump now into a demo. Uh, I'm going to pass things over to Pranab, who's going to lead this. And again, feel free to ask any questions on chat or in our Q&A feature. We will be pausing at the end of the demo and um, I think Pranab will, will pause throughout to answer any questions as well. Okay, gonna go ahead and stop my share now. Um, Pranab, go ahead and, and take us away. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. So um, I have a pre-recorded demo, but before the demo starts, I just wanna give a note about CLA group. CLA group is a group of repos, either in Gerrit or GitHub, that are governed by a particular CLA agreement. Okay, and let's start the demo. Do a demo of how Contributor Console works in, in V2 version of Easy CLA. But before I give that demo, I want to give you some context. So we are going to use this CLA group. I am, this screen is the, the PCC, Project Control Center, the project, uh, admin console for the or the project console for easy CLA and um, here we have a CLA group called February 23 2021 demo that CLA group is enforcing CLA on uh, on a project group and its child a test project group and test project its child and it is enforcing corporate CLA individual CLA and corporate users have to sign individual CLA. Now this is, uh, I just uh, selected all three options for demo purpose. Mostly CLA groups have either corporate or individual or they have corporate and individual, that's it. So right now, these are the templates, ICLA and uh, CCLA that have been assigned to this CLA group. And yeah, so one person is, has already signed the CLA. Uh, there is a CLA manager associated with this group. You can see, download the signed PDFs. You can export the signed uh, information as a CSV. You can also search for people's names and all that. Um, signed CCLA, signed ICLAs, all of those. Okay, you can see the approved contributor. So let's see if there are any. So approved contributor is the same person who is the CLA manager uh, approval criteria. Yeah, so we have added two people as approval criteria for this company, okay, and so forth. So now I am going to take, uh, I'm going to take a new user, uh, a test contributor. Uh, so this user is called test contributor December 2020. And this user is already stuck on CLA. Um, the PR is stuck and this user is now going to try to commit that PR. And we will take the scenario where the user is, a, is coming from a company that is not there in the database, in the CRM database. And this user will become a CLA manager, add themselves in the approval list and then commit the PR, okay? So let's get started, so. We click on the LFX Easy CLA. Takes us to the contributor console. As you will see, it gives you the explanation of what a contributor, a corporate contributor is, what an individual contributor is, and so forth. The user chooses to proceed as corporate contributor. And okay, 
So now here, this user's organization is not there. Uh, let's say 02, 23, 20, 21. This organization does not show up. So user clicks here, organization not listed. They create a website. Then here, they give the name of the org. Okay, they click next. Now the system is asking if you want to become a CLA manager. So if suppose the user said no, then you can you can identify somebody else in your company to be a CLA manager. You can give their name and email address, right? But otherwise you can just go back and you can say yes. Here we are gonna choose yes. So it's gonna assign me as a CLA manager in the background. And now it is saying that you will have to log into Linux Foundation LF uh, login, um, the SSO account. So you should have, you, you might have to create one. Okay, so this user does not have a SSO account. So let's say proceed. Okay, so since the user does not have SSO account, the user will chooses to continue with its Gmail account and they say, okay, test dot. December 2020. All right. So we logged in using our Gmail account and we will give us a will give us a new username for the LF account. Okay, so create account. Okay, so now the system is taking us to the corporate console. It's configuring initial CLA manager settings. Click on proceed. You will be redirected to the organization dashboard, which is the corporate console. Okay, so you can always go back, but I'm choosing to proceed. The GitHub session has been preserved in current tab and new tab is opened with corporate console. Okay, so you see that the new company that I created got assigned to my user, right? Uh, Test.contributor.december2020. Okay, so now for this company, for this project, there is no CLA signed. I will start the CLA signing process. I'll say proceed with signing. Are you authorized to sign CLA on your company's behalf? If you choose no, it will. You can again identify authorized signatory. Okay, give a name and email address. An email will go to that person and they can sign it. But let's say yes. So now you review and sign CC, uh, CCLA, corporate CLA. in some values now here a neat feature is that if you have a cop some corporations have got separate entities legal entities that are responsible for their intellectual property so you can always edit this name and you can uh, put the name of that intellectual property unit which is signing the CLA if you want to that is so like I could I could put IP unit or some whatever right but I'm not doing that so I'll just type in some values and I'll be done with this. Finish. Okay, so once the CLA signing is done, the CLA manager page is what will be seen. 
So it will take some time for this page to refresh. Let us give it a few minutes or, or, or a minute or so. The page should refresh on its own. Because there is a delay between DocuSign and uh, the database. By the way, this problem has been fixed now. Okay. I guess uh, we'll have to refresh the page. Okay. So now this is the CLA manager page. We see that the CLA has been signed, project, project, projects that are part of that project group, uh, the name of the CLA group, status sign, sign on, signatory, and you can download the signed PDF. Okay. Now this test contributor user has been assigned as a CLA manager for uh, this organization, 02-23-2021. And uh, this person can now add anybody else as a CLA manager and give them the same rights so, so that they can also view this page, okay, and make, uh, make uh, edit updates to this page. Now, the other thing that the, this person, test contributor, needs to do is to add themselves so that they can commit their PR, right? So they need to add themselves to the approved list of contributors, okay? And let's do that. So add, so let's add them by this. So let's say test dot contributor dot sender twenty twenty at gmail dot com. Let's say save. So okay. Okay. So what what that message was it was that the uh, con test contributor needs to do another step with CLA where they need to acknowledge their association with this company and then once they have done that then uh, easy CLA check will be over for them forever okay so we also have the CLA manager can see events uh, audit log who has done what and um, they can see statistics for their organization uh, what is going on okay um, all right, so now we go back to GitHub. We are still stuck, right? But we have been added as an approved contributor. So let's see what happens. So we proceed as corporate contributor. We select our organization. So it was 02-23-2021, right? This one, proceed. Okay, so we had set up the CLA group where it requires corporate CLA users to also sign individual CLA. So we need to sign the individual CLA. And we do sign CLA. We say continue, start, sign. finish all right so at this point the system has done the the requirements that the CLA group was set with ICLA signed CCLA signed the users association with the corporation has been completed so the page should refresh and we should see the CLA check is no longer blocking us let's see yeah so you see that uh, it has turned green. Now we can commit our PR, okay? So this is what this is what the contributor console looks like. Now, for most people who are on version V1 and moving to version V2, all of this will be migrated from V1 to V2. So if you are already a contributor on V1, then you would be in the approved list in V2 also. 
and you won't have to go through the CLA block but a new user from your company who comes in can be added so let's say let's do a let's do another test let's go here um, and let me show you what happens new contributor uh, test PM December 2020 and this contributor is not in the approved list so let's see what happens so if I go to report 2 I see okay let's uh, go to readme and make a change create a pull request create a pull request Okay, easy CLA block. Now at this point, this contributor clicks on easy CLA. Now this contributor is from your company, so it's a corporate contributor. So let's say authorize LF engineering. Okay, proceed as corporate contributor. The organization was 0223. Let's see, yeah, the search found it. Proceed. Okay, so now uh, the system tells us that there is a CLA manager for your organization. So you can select the name of the CLA manager that you want to approach, and then you can click on request authorization. We'll be notified to authorize. Con of your request to be authorized for contributions you will be notified via email when status has been approved or rejected okay so you exit CLA now I have the the email open so here I got an email approval request for contributor test PM okay so it is saying approval can be done here okay so let's click No, I need to log in as my user. I'm logged in as log out. And close this. And then this. So, first stop contributor dot December 2020 at gmail.com. Okay, so then here I come to the corporate console landing page. I see my project, test project group ID, and uh, it will take me to the CLA manager page. All right. So here I can add this other user as a contributor. So I can say test.pm.december2020 at gmail.com. Save. Okay. So now I have added this user. Let's see what happens. So now the user is test.pm, yeah. All right, so we go here. Okay, proceed as corporate contributor. Organization name, we go to 23, proceed. Now it gives us the same message that you have to sign ICLA also. Proceed. Sign ICLA. Continue. Start. 
sign dot and sign Oops. finish okay so now the clhx should be lifted and uh, we should be able to commit our code let's see there you go and that's how it will work okay. okay so i see yeah. uh, i'll pass it over to stephanie if you have any questions you can uh, ask go ahead great thank you pranav i'm gonna go on back uh, get back here and share my screen just give you one second And I see there's been a number of questions that have come through, which is great. We will also spend some time at the end uh, to address any additional questions or kind of talk through things live as well. Excuse me. Let's do this manually. Here we are. Give me one second. Apologies, everybody. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and share this way. Uh, apologies, everybody. We're just going to go ahead and share like this uh, presentation mode. It's not working on my computer for some reason. Um, so before we jump into Q and A, uh, I just wanted to share a quick sneak peek on what's planned in 2021 for the Easy CLA tool. As we mentioned, uh, projects are being migrated. So existing users of our Easy CLA version one or prior are being migrated over to our version two, uh, which is what uh, Pranav has just walked us through. Uh, we're also going to be increasing our GitLab. Uh, we're also going to be expanding to GitLab support and enhancing our handling of bots. And of course, as we go, we're really focused on fixing any bugs that we encounter from our rollout. In H2, we are going to be uh, launching uh, what's going to start as a limited access beta of our organizational dashboard. So the CLA management uh, capabilities that Pranab walked us through for Easy CLA those are going to be part of a, the larger organization dashboard hub uh, that we will be rolling out in the second half of this year. I now want to open it up for any final questions that, that anyone will have. Uh, we are kind of at time here, but we will go ahead and spend a few minutes uh, just to make sure that we're able to answer any final questions that, um, that the participants have here. And I'm going to go ahead, you know, feel free. I'm going to go ahead and allow everyone to talk here. So feel free if you uh, have any questions, just to, to ask it live. Um, you know, we want to make sure we are able to address anything. Yeah. First of all, uh, thanks a lot uh, for the presentation and uh, for a lot of uh, materials. Um, I had a question about um, uh, GitHub integration. So how do you currently implement it? Is it a GitHub app or is it a GitHub Actions bot um, the team would need to configure? Yeah, I can, I can take that. Thanks for the question. Uh, for GitHub, we have a, a GitHub app, which is uh, also called a bot sometimes, uh, which uh, uh, typically managers install, so GitHub organization owners or get project managers would install the bot into the uh, into the application into github that adds the hooks such that we are able to receive notifications when uh, prs are created and open we then go through um, checks uh, because we got through a notification and we can then update the status on github so that's how the integration is done thank you So 
so follow on to that, does that mean that uh, with that uh, GitHub support that if a project is out there, um, even if it's not on, uh, you know, an LF project that we would be able to use this? Uh, generally you need, uh, there's two parts to that. I don't know, um, Steve, you wanted to pipe up with that as well, but um, during the, you have to log into the project control center, which uh, typically is a project manager's role. Uh, they would then set up the CLA group, assign which legal documents. And part of that workflow is there's a step at the end where you click and then you navigate over to GitHub, you install the bot, and then you come back. So generally that has to be done through the project control center. Sure. Yeah. And, and as far as having it for what projects it's available currently, because it's because this is all integrated into the LFX platform that Stephanie was sharing earlier. Um, currently, we're doing it just for LF hosted projects, but we're, I think, as part of the roadmap going forward, we'll be looking at what's feasible to offer for additional projects. Okay. And I, I'll assume that that's a uh, second half plus. I uh, <laughs> kind of finger in the air. I expect that's likely. Yep. Okay, so it's not it's it's not included in the current Get, Get, GitHub plans, so it's, that's why I was wanting to. Confirm. I think that's right. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Now, now, to, and just to be clear, within you know within a project that is within an LF project that is set up on LFX, um, and I think I, I may have mentioned this in the chat for some of the conversations as well. Um, repo, you know, once a project is set up on Easy CLA, it's open to be able to configure it for multiple GitHub organizations and multiple repos within that organization. So. It is so where there's an LF, an LF project configured, it can be used with multiple different different orgs and repos. Another question: Do you have uh, templates uh, for standard uh, CCLAs and uh, ICLAs configured? So, for example, in our case, we use uh, Apache Foundation-like uh, contributor license agreement. Would uh, we need to reupload it somehow? Or would it be possible to configure that uh, right in the system? Yep. So, great, great question, Oleg. So, what we have set up as a default is a, a CCLA and ICLA that are based off of the Apache Software Foundation uh, CLAs. We have modified them. Is substantively, they're you know, they're exactly the same as Apache's in terms of the scope of the license grant, other things. There's a couple of kind of uh, operational, let's say like administrative details in the way that we've changed it um, to make it fit, to make the authorizations in the CLAs fit better with the easy CLA workflow. Um, so I think for, I, I believe I owe you an email on some of the details around that. Um, so I, I'll share with you what those templates look like. But yeah, we use those as the default templates, but it is possible to, we can configure it on the back end for other CLAs beyond those. Yep. Okay, thank you. And, uh, yeah, for one contributor and one uh, repository, is it possible to require multiple uh, CC, uh, ICLAs signed? Do you mean multiple different kinds of ICLAs? So like you have to uh, sign this? Yeah, we have some complicated use cases when uh, uh, maintainers uh, define their own ICLA, though formally we still have organization-wide uh, ACLA applied. Mm. So yeah, it's not a, a showstopper for us, but I wonder whether it's supported in the system. Yeah, I think given given the the current where it's currently at, I'm not sure we could support that kind of operating as two fully separate CLAs, both being required at the same time. There may be some ways we could look at handling it via um, kind of incorporating both of the CLAs into the same document and having the document just signed all at once. But it might be some nuances of that we'd wanna, we'd wanna look at, yeah. Okay, uh, thank you. Sure. Awesome. Any final questions here? Maybe have room for one or two more questions to close us out. Okay, great. Let me just switch this over here to, you know, kind of what's next. Um, in terms of getting started, as I mentioned, the release of our V2 will be rolling out in phases over the next few weeks. So, you know, reach out to your program manager or you can contact us at lfx.dev forward slash questions if you have any questions on timing or status of EZCLA usage or if you have any other questions around about the tool. 
Um, here's some other great resources that you can access if you want to learn more about EasyCLA. Uh, you can read the, the blog post on uh, V2 release notes. Um, feel free as well to stay connected with us uh, by following us on our newsletter. And then, of course, you know, as, as you use the tool, uh, whether you're a project manager, CLA manager, or just contributing, um, you know, get we, we have a support channel as well. So lfx.dev forward slash easy CLA dash support, and we'll be able to, to help you out. Awesome. Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate the time. Again, this will be recorded and we're posting this to YouTube and I'll be sharing out these and other useful links in follow-up as well. Thank you all.